special operators demo program. Notice, guys, that we have the variables uh, pizzas, people, total slices, and in, uh, leftover. And they're all, so, all set equal to 0. I set pizzas equal to 3 just to keep it interesting. And hey, here's a constant that's used in this program called slices per pizza. Notice that I always type constants in all uppercase letters. And of course, you have to put the keyword const out there. Oh, I hate this. My uh, inline comments are not lined up. So let's all do this at your seats. This is just good emphasis, good practice. I'd take a point off if you handed in uh, a program that didn't have things lined up nicely. So the first executable uh, assignment statement multiplies pizzas times slices per pizza. Look at this new version of to, uh, Visual Studio 2010. If you hold your mouse over a variable or a constant, it actually tells you what that constant or variable is equal to up to that point in the program. So you see in my pop-up there that uh, that constant slices per pizza is currently equal to 8. Well, you could have seen that by looking at, uh, backwards with your eyeballs, and you would have noticed that it was equal to 8 there. But in a long program, that might be really handy, so you don't have to scroll up a lot. Anyway, assignment statements work from right to left. Whatever happens on the right-hand side of the equal symbol, 3 times 8, which is equal to 24, of course, that execution dumps and stores the number 24 into the variable total slices thus overwriting the zero that was in total slices. That's an assignment statement that performs a computation. And then, of course, it's the out statement printed on the screen. And I like to put little colons in there and notice the space so that the number 24 doesn't butt up against the colon. Just little touches like that are nice, that space in there. And now the uh, special operator that we're, we're studying this week. That percent symbol is actually called the modulus operator in C++, or mod operator for short, and simply takes the first number divided by the second number and then the remainder of that. So in this case, 24 divided by 7 leaves a remainder of 3 if you use long division like we did on the chalkboard earlier, earlier in this class. And therefore, the number 3 is stored in leftover. Let's all execute the program. Debug, start without debugging. And we get the answer here. In a sense, it's the answer. Leftover slices of pizza is equal to 3. Notice that we get press any key to continue because of the system pause. And then the return 0 is like the end. We stop reading the book at that point, even though there are many chapters left in this demo program. You can put multiple return zeros in a program, and the computer stops at the first return zero. And that's convenient in teaching situations like this, or debugging big programs. If your program is broken, just put a return zero at the very beginning. At least that much works, hopefully. Then successfully move the return zero statement down your program until you clean up each little section. And that helps you focus on where you're debugging. Any questions up to this point? Continuing uh, with the next operator, let's all drag and drop, or copy and paste, whatever you want to call it, or do, those two lines of code, system pause and return zero, and drag and drop them down to uh, the point right below this next outdented C out statement. We're now going to examine what happens with this compound operator, the plus equals symbol that you read about in the lecture notes. At this point, the program leftover is equal to 3. And remember, assignment statements always work from right to left. So 3 right here plus 2 is 5. And therefore, the 5 gets now uh, stored in leftover, overwriting the 3 that used to be there. It's just like a story. It's like your birthday. You add 1 each time you hit a birthday. In this case, you added 2. It's too bad. Then this line of code adds two more to leftover. It's just doing it in a more compact way. So somewhere along the line, they decided, hey, instead of having to type out equals leftover plus two, they invented this little compound operator that lets you just type it in a shorter line of code. And I don't give you extra credit for using the plus equals compound operator. If you want to use it, that's great. If not, that's great. That's OK, too. Just understand it if you ever see it somewhere. 
So effectively, we have now taken uh, the value 3 that was uh, stored in leftover, and we've added 2 to it to make it 5, and then 2 more to make it 7. So let's all run the program and see if leftover is indeed the value 7. And I have errors. So now we run the program. And we do indeed get leftover is now 7. Because we used the plus equal symbol to add 2 to it. And we also used this assignment statement to add 2 to it. Notice that uh, the leftover that's on the right of the equal symbol here has 2 being added to it. And that grand total then moves from right to left, overwriting leftover. In algebra, you never have something like x equals x plus 2. It's illegal to, to reuse a variable on the right and the left of an equal symbol in the algebra. But in computer science, you see that a lot. Next, we're going to drag and drop our system pause and return 0, endpoint down to right below the next outdented C out statement where we're uh, examining what happens when we use the plus plus symbol, which in your notes is called the incrementing operator. Well, that adds 1. I believe that leftover was up to 7. So when you have 1 added to that, it adds 8. And then this line of code is another way of adding 1. So we're up to 9. And then this line of code is yet another way. We're up to 9. And then this plus equals is back again. So leftover is now uh, a total, a grand total of 10 or 11. It says 11 here. 7 plus 1 is 8 plus 1 is 9. Plus, yeah, we're up to 11. Let's execute the program. And leftover is now 11. I'm just showing you four different ways to add 1 to a variable. Four different assignment statements. I prefer the shortest one that uses the plus plus symbol. But again, you don't lose any points on assignments or on tests or quizzes if you choose to use these other ways of adding 1. The plus plus symbol is indeed the symbol that gives C++ its name, the language C++. There was a language C. And then when the Jarn Straustrup and, uh, added on to that, and had to think of a, a language name. The, the story goes is uh, that he, instead of naming the language D, he named it C++. There was a language B before there was language C. And there was a language Algol that I guess people called A back in the late 60s or early 70s. And this all happened in the 60s, 70s, when programmers were all nerds and didn't really have you know, creativity and personality like you guys. So uh, we we're stuck with C++ 30 years later as a name. OK, continuing, let's all uh, drag and drop our system pause return 0 down here, where we have two return zeros, but that doesn't hurt right now. And the last thing I'm squeezing in here is uh, your first example of an if statement. We'll formally study this in a whole other unit. but to give you a, a, a preview, if the variable leftover is an even number, the program prints out even. Otherwise, it prints out the word odd. Modding something by 2, in other words, dividing something by 2 and checking the remainder, is a fail-safe way of checking to see if a number is even or not. Stephanie, what's 13 divided by 2? What's the remainder that I meant to say? Good, 1. Uh, Josh, what is 10 divided by 2? What's the remainder of that? Yeah. So 10 is even. And by the way, 13 was odd. because of. So it works out. Any big number, small number, when divided by 2, you either get a remainder of 0 or 1. And that helps you determine whether that original number was even or odd. Most of you just look at the last digit. If it's a 2, 4, 6, 8, or 0, you know it's an even number. But a computer can't just easily do that at least not with how I'm teaching you this semester. So this little uh, if-else statement can be copied and pasted into future programs. This is your first little toolbox algorithm 
that you should remember, hey, I saw that in a demo program. I'll find it when you need it two months from now, and I'm not going to like tell you. If you email me, I'm going to say, it's to my website somewhere. So, so file it away. Let's run the program one more time. And it should say that the number 11 is odd. And it does. The else kicks in here, and the if statement is false. So the word even does not print out, but the word odd does. And we'll study if else statements much more in depth uh, next week or the week after that.